Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, we had some problems yesterday. We didn't get very far, but I think we have some answers that can help us today. So let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for the study this morning, for the people that are participating, those that watch these videos on YouTube, and that are studying these truths, trying to understand them. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can be here and give us wisdom, help us to see these things clearly, to correct any errors we may have in our understanding, and to apply these truths to the present time, the situation that is existing in this movement. And we need light for our feet to know where we are to walk as We see that there are many dangers before us. Help us, Lord, to trust in you. May your uh, angels watch over each person. We pray for those with illnesses, uh, that you can heal them. And Lord, that the distractions of this world cannot draw us away from a knowledge of you. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So yesterday we were struggling over uh, 2015, that is on, on our lines. We have these uh, lines of Jotham's line of Abimelech, Abimelech's downfall. And in this line of Jotham, uh, we had uh, here, what we had was this. So I'm just... As I change this here. So we had worked on putting July 16, 17, and 18. Originally, we had just July 17. This is the beginning of the camp meeting uh, in Alberta in 2015, the one where Parminder was at. And um, uh, this, so we had originally July 17, and we had the 26th day of the fourth month, because that's going to be the study that I present there. And we related that because of the 26th day of the fourth month connected with the previous waymark. Um, and then we were trying to fit this in with Judges 9, verse 5, that talks about the slain of the 70 sons of Jeroboam and the one that's left, which is Jotham. Now, <clears throat> I think that we were wrong in, in what we were trying to, well, it's not wrong trying to do it, but we, we, were, we were picking the wrong date and the wrong event. And uh, I think what we need to do is, um, is backtrack a bit. So one of the things that we discussed was events in 2015. And the one that seems the most significant oops, is this event here. So July, 20, July 16th. We have Nashville. That is, this is the re release of Ellen White's unpublished manuscripts. And so this is when Nashville starts to be noticed because people go into Ellen White's writings and uh, the destruction of Nashville becomes, we'll say, present truth for Adventism. Does that seem like a fair statement? that this isn't really present truth um, prior to July 16th, 2015, because these Ellen White's writings regarding Nashville had been basically hidden. Even though there was a knowledge of her vision in Nashville, this it's the, the unpublished writings that clearly show that this destruction comes upon Nashville that these fireballs hit Nashville. So does that seem like a fair assessment that that's what needs to be recognized in 2015, rather than the start of the camp meeting in Alberta? Even though we do, we do have that camp meeting as important in other lines, so. It seemed like the Nashville really stood out. Yeah. So. I, I think that's what we need to do. Now, the question is, can we connect this to 9 verse 5? And 
And I don't think that that's where we need to connect it. I'm actually going to put 9 verse 4 and 5 because these it back to 2014. So in 2014, what we have is we have the camp meeting in Arkansas, June 22nd, where Ezra 7-9 comes out. It is anniversary of um, June 22nd, 2011, in which Jeff received $165,000 to start the School of the Prophets. The number 165,000 is 264 times 624. So uh, the reverse of of it, you know, so the 26th day of the fourth month or the fourth month, 26th day, but written in reverse, plus 264. And that's one of the reasons why I took uh, July 17th in 2015, where I'm going to present uh, the 264, right? And that's going to be um, the date for Nashville. Now, I still want to put 264 here because... We're going to mark the 26th day of the fourth month as this date for Nashville. Now, we don't have that date in 2015, but we can see that that becomes relevant. Now, one of the things uh, here, so when we look at this line, we're marking December 21st, 2012. There's 777 days from when I first present in this movement on October 5th, 2012. Then there's 777, or 77 days, pardon me, to December 21st, 2012. And this is that date that brings us back all the way to the beginning of the Mayan calendar. Now the Mayan calendar, begins on August 31st, what am I doing here? August, I did that backwards, don't know what I did there. August, so what is this? August 31st, 13, I'm not sure why I wrote that. Um, there's a reason why, but I don't remember eight, 31, 13. So we're taking August 11th. I don't remember why I wrote that. Anyway, August 11th, 31, 13. Maybe PC. because it's the same number uh, when you write it either way. I mean, it's the same, same as the August 11th at the bottom. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember why, why well, August 11th, 2013. Oh, that's going to be at the camp meeting where we discuss... Ezra 7 9, that's why. So Jeff's going to ask this question. So this is um, in Alberta. Um, so this is going to be. So Ezra 7 9 is asked about by Jeff. Uh, so I can go Jeff asks. on August 31st, 2013, right? And it, so it has this relationship to this number, August 11th, um, 3113. Now that date that the mind calendar uh, begins, right? So this is, uh, I'm not gonna go to the de details of it. Now, if we look at it from, so originally what I did, is I was reading this this uh, paper um, that was written about calendars, and he gives this date August eleventh, thirty one thirteen B.C. But he believes it is a Julian date, and that's because normally when you give dates B.C. any any date actually before uh, uh, fifteen whatever it is, 1578, whatever the date is where the calendar changes from Julian to Gregorian, we normally give Julian dates. Now, 
he's just taking this from some other source and they say August 11, 31, 13 BC. So he believes that that's a Julian date that the Mayan calendar begins. So originally when I looked at this, I did like he did. I looked at the Julian date. Now, when you look at this Julian date in 31, 13 BC, and you do it as August uh, 11, the date that it comes up to on the biblical calendar um, is the 26th day of the fourth month. Now, you won't find that in the calendar converter because the calendar converter is using a different system of determining the months because it's using the biblical calendar and it's going pro proleptically all the way back. But the biblical calendar wasn't in use in 3113 BC. That is, it was a different type of calendar. So this is before Moses' calendar that was given. And so each month is determined, determined by having uh, uh, the full moon being on the 15th day of the month. So it's the simple way of thinking it. So the date there would be the 26th day of the fourth month on the calendar at the time. So I noticed that this was the 26th day of the fourth month. Now, it'll say it's the 24th day of the fourth month if you look on the one we have. And it'll say, though, it's the 26th day of the fifth month on the Islamic calendar, or the rabbinic calendar, pardon me, and the 23rd of the fifth month on the Islamic. So and the Islamic calendar it doesn't really work that far back. But anyway, that's... That's what was seen. And then when I looked actually at the Gregorian date, the actual date, um, it's going to be, uh, and, and, and just one note, if you look on the Mayan long count calendar, it's going to be 000, 000. That's the date that's August 11th, Julian. So it's obviously um, 17 times 20, which is going to be, um, 17 times 20 is uh, three, what, 340 days off when you do it that way. So it's just not, not a correct date. And, um, but what I should put here then is that in this line, if you look at this, it's going to be the 26th day of the fourth month, right? So it gives us this 26th day of the fourth month. And 2014 gives us this 26th day of the fourth month. And 2015, in connection with that study. So I put here Nashville, but I probably should put still the 17th and the 18th. So we're going to have best way probably to do that is just 16th to 18th. So... So we're going to put those three days as, um, so you have the releasing of Ellen White's writings, the 100th anniversary of her death. Um, this Nashville study is going to come out. And also following that is the study where I present the 26th day of the fourth month. So we can see how this 26th day of the fourth month becomes connected with this first angel's message. So this is something that we don't understand at the time, right? So in 2013, I don't understand the 26th day of the fourth month. I don't understand that in 2014, but we're just looking back at these events and seeing how they connect. Now, the other thing about this 2014, June 22nd, is if we, we go back because he's going to refer to uh, uh, June 22nd, 2011 as the day he gets this $165,000. And then the camp meeting on June 22nd, in which Ezra 7-9 is going to be clearly laid out by Noel. Um, the center date of that, so if you take June 22nd, 2011, 
2011 and June 22nd, 2014, the center date is December 21st, 2012. So that also ties together that symbol, right? So that 26th day of the fourth month symbol is tied to these various dates. <clears throat> now, um, when we look at Judges verses nine to uh, Judges chapter nine verses four to five. So let's go there. Uh, these two verses really go together. So we're going to keep them as, as one. Because in 9 verse 4, it says, They gave him three score ten pieces of silver out of the house of baal Bareth. So what we're looking at here is this relationship between this money that's given to Jeff, $165,000. Um, and we're just comparing this as... The counterfeit. So there's this 70 pieces of silver that this is going to be paid out of the house of Baal Bareth. That's the Lord of the Covenant. That's um, this counterfeit uh, God. But in this whole thing, we see the symbols of the 70 weeks. Uh, this ties us to um, Lamech, right? The, the 70 weeks, the two Lamex, and, um, and then it also ties us to the story of uh, Ezra 7-9, because that's going to tie us uh, to this idea of uh, this money that's going to be placed in the house of God, right? So um, Ezra is going to leave Babylon, go to Jerusalem. They're going to have this gold and silver that's given, and it's going to be placed in the house of God. And here we have money being taken out of the house of this counterfeit God, being paid to slay, right? And, of course, we know that Ezra 7, 9, that's going to be de dealing with the start of the 70 weeks. So we can see how all these things tie together. I mean, I know there's lots of details there that I'm just skipping over presently, but we went through them. And then... In verse 5, we're going to have these light and vain persons uh, killing these 70 sons of Jeroboam. Though Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, he is left, right? And um, uh, so he's preserved, I guess is the word, but it's, it's also sometimes called the residue. Um, the remnant, right? So he becomes like a remnant and for he hid himself, right? So he's uh, going to hide himself. Now, the name Jotham, um, we know that this, this name is, uh, uh, has to do with um, Jehovah is perfect, so so this has to do with the perfection of God, right? And this, of course, would refer to Christ. So this is a message regarding Christ. And so we're saying this is about the midst of the week, right? The, the stone that the builders rejected. So we have this one stone. And we're saying that this is a reference to Christ as well. Now, the, the numbers here, uh, 3147. So when we take the Hebrew number of this name, uh, we have a number that is, uh, so if we took 147, 147 is just uh, 49 times 3. So you could say, uh, if you took this 3147 and you just said 147 divided by 3, you'd get 49, right? So so it's an interesting number just in and of, of itself, its characteristics. Um, and uh, if you divide, of course, this whole number by three, you get 1049 as the number, which is uh, a prime number. Now, uh, I was looking at this number, and uh, this is just kind of interesting, but if I go from June 22nd, 2014, and I count 3,147 days, so, which is, is roughly eight and a half years, right? So you can, I'm going to count from that. So that's going to bring 
bring us to February 2nd, 2023. Now, we don't really have anything for February 2nd as a symbol. We could say it's 22, which is a number of restoration, right? Uh, but February 2nd, 2023, in the biblical calendar is the 11th day of the 11th month. Um, so we have that 1111 symbol there. Right. And 22, of course, represented with February 2nd. And we know that 22 can be 11 times 11. Now, the significance then of um, this date, uh, February 2nd. Now, we remember, so maybe I should do it some other way so you could see it. Here, I'll do it this way. So, I'm, so what we have, uh, yeah, I don't know if, if you can really see this that well, but I'm going to try to make it bigger. Okay, so here are the dates. Um, these are the dates, uh, December 21st, and there's that June 22nd, 2014. Hopefully you can see that. It's way over on the left. Some people, computer screens might not be able to say that, but see that too well, but it's 6-22-2014. And... Um, uh, so it's 548 days after December 21st, 2012. And if you went to 622, 2011, it would be 548 days before December 20, 21st, 2012, right? So that's why it's the center date. But if I look at this date and, and here's this date, so that's zero. So it's lining up here. And, and if I go down this line here, You'll see there is February 2nd, 2023. So that's going to be 3,147 days. So that's the number of the name of Jotham. So I'm saying that we're taking Jotham and we're putting him here at June 22nd, 2014, right? That, that, that's the verse that, that marks that. That's going to be nine, uh, Judges 9, verse 4 and 5. And then we have this February... 2nd, 2023. So February 2nd, we don't have it as a symbol per se, except that that number is a symbol. So if I go here and look at this, let's see how big I can get it before it does funny things. So here is the date. Um, so I'm just, I'm going to have to put it in here. 3147. There we go. So you can see there's February 2nd. It's the 11th day of the 11th month, which is 11 plus 11 is 22. February 2nd is the second month, the second day, right? Also, it's the same on the rabbinic calendar, right? And this is 22 days past January 11th, 2023. So if we look here, uh, you'll see here's January 11th, 2023, right? And you'll see that February 2nd is 22 days after it. So we have all these symbols of 22s and 11s, right? Now, what is that? What is the 22 and 11? Where do we get this symbol? The two 11s and 22. Where do we get it? Anybody remember? these different symbols so it first shows up in uh, the story of joseph is one place it shows up so we're going to have 11 years that joseph from his two dreams to the dreams of the butler and baker and then 11 years from the dreams of the butler and baker to the fulfillment of his two dreams and that's going to be uh 22 years altogether 11 plus 11. now we know there's 11 generations to the flood and 11 generations from the flood to the Israelites entering, entering into Egypt, right? That is Jacob and his sons entering into Egypt, right? Uh, so this 11, 11 and 22 shows up many places. It's also Daniel 11, 11, which is an important verse. Now, it's also the year I was born, 
February 6th, 1963. I was born on the 11th day of the 11th month. So just from a personal point of view, February 2nd, 2023 is my 60th birthday, according to the biblical calendar. Right. So obviously I celebrated my 60th birthday on February 6th, but on February 2nd, which is 3,149 days from June 22nd, 2014, would have been my 60th birthday, according to the biblical calendar. But we have all of these 11 So for me, it's the day I was born, biblically speaking, 11th day, 11th month. But it's a symbol. And and we know that it's the symbol that 1111 is uh, for this movement presently had been uh, Daniel 1111. And what was Daniel 1111 about? Becomes an important verse, right? It's Raphia, right? So Daniel 11, 11 is about Raphia. King of the South shall be moved with collar, shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north. And he shall sh set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. So that's a symbol. And we, we attached it to November 9th. We attached it to November 9th because why? Why did we mark November 9th as Raphia originally? Because we had, that is Raphia. And then later we attached July 18th to Paneum. Now we know that that wasn't on the big line that we were expecting. Because this becomes something internal, right? But we were looking at this battle between the king of the north and the king of the south being Russia and the United States, right? And, of course, we made a mistake in our understanding of that. Yeah. So Sam has put that. We thought of battles between Russia and America. Now, we understand that this is a little bit different, that we were talking about something internal within the movement, so, so we've had to uh, refine our understanding of that, of what it means. And that's one of the things that we've, we've had to struggle with uh, after July 18th. How do we understand November 9th? How do we understand July 18th? How do we understand December 25th, 2021? <clears throat> so, and, and there are other 1111s as well, right? So there's other verses uh, that we've used, which I'm not going to go into, but this 111122, which is the symbol of restoration. But when it's divided like this 11 and 11, it's chiastic. So it's a chiastic structure. 22 divided into two periods of 11. <clears throat> so I think that we can safely say that verses not a uh, chapter nine of Judges verses four to five relates to uh, to June 22nd, 2014. So we have to take a verse that's going to address July 16th to 18th, where we're dealing with Nashville, and it can't be verse 5. So we were struggling to place verse 5 there. Now, we remember this is Jotham's line. Now, Jotham's line is precedes the... Um, the fall of uh, Abimelech, Abimelech's downfall. Right? So it's the truths that are given to this movement that they're now going to undo as we pass through this history. The teachings of Parminders that have survived, right? So Abimelech is this spirit of Parminder that continues in the movement. And so when we look at Abimelech's downfall, we're looking at events after November 9th, 2019. And we also have 9 verse 4 there as this email. So that's going to line up with June 22nd, 2014, right? 
And so here we can take that verse and place it there. What was the email again? I'm, I'm telling Jeff that uh, the prediction of Nashville could fail because oh, okay. of the failed predictions that starts with this December 21st, 2012 failed prediction. That is the Mayan calendar prediction. Okay. And, and, and so then I noticed that you know, there's all this line of failed predictions. September 23rd, 777 days before November 9th is on that line. And so, so I'm pointing out to Jeff that it appears that our line, our event that we're predicting is on this line of failed predictions. And so it could be that this is telling us that our prediction will fail. Now, I sent that out not just to Jeff, but to a number of different people. I know Odilio responded back and said, well, this is strong evidence that your prediction isn't going to fail, but I, I couldn't understand his logic um, on that. Because to me, it's like, well, you have all this line of failed predictions. His logic was sort of like, well, these other predictions failed, but this one won't. But it didn't really make sense. Um, so, and also we understood that we had to experience a disappointment. So, you know, so there was this be prior to July 18th, uh, we're looking at this. Now I send this to Jeff. Jeff says that he's going to watch the video because I did a video on it on the Friday night studies and that he would respond back, but he never did. So Jeff never responded back. I think that's actually the last email. Might not be. I might have received an email where he asked about some other questions. Um, but anyway, so it's probably not the last email. But uh so I initiated this email. Jeff doesn't respond. He definitely never responds about this email, never responds to it. And I'm watching the studies, and I think that he's going to lead up to presenting what I gave in this email, but he never does. And it seems like that he is, but that something happens and he backs off because he starts appearing to go in that direction in these studies. So maybe something happened behind the scene where people... Uh, maybe he shared it with other people. Maybe he did watch it. Maybe he rejected it, but he doesn't tell me that. So I don't know to this day what he did with this email, whether he studied into it, whether he rejected the idea. I don't know. But anyway, that's going to be uh, marked by this verse as well. So, you know, we probably could put, and, and of course, you see the symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. Uh, with April 26th. So it wasn't intentional. I sent it on that date. It just was the way things worked out. So we can put Judges 9, verse 4 to 5. So what we've done so far is we have lined up the verses in Jotham's line with the verses in Abimelech's downfall. Whether we need to continue doing that or not, we haven't decided. Right? So that's the I mean, that's part of the problem with these two lines. And, and we've said that there's these two lines. That is, Abimelech's downfall is being prophesied by Jotham in this uh, these symbols of, and we don't have them all here, but uh, which we should. I got the vine over here, uh, but we're going to have the... Uh, the first one's going to be, uh, what's, the, what's the first one? I know the fig is the second one. You got the vine, the fig. Oh, the olive is the first one, right? So you're going to have the olive here, right? You're going to have uh, the fig here. And then you have the vine, And we have verses attached to those as well. Um, so we had uh, the fig was verse 9-11, right? So. And then we're going to have the bramble at the end, right? So we have that drawn in another line. Um, so the all of the fig... And uh, let's switch these around. 
and the vine. And these are uh, messages that are going to reject uh, the request of Abimelech or of the trees, pardon me, of the trees that they, they would have these messages rule over them. And Abimelech, of course, he's going to be represented by the bramble later on. Um, but Abimelech then is all through this history, and these messages are through this history, but they're going to reject this entreaty of the trees. Right? And hopefully that makes sense to people. It's you know it's a parable of of these of the parable of the trees. It's sometimes called. So we have a nine verse four and five, and then we have this July tenth date. Now the July tenth date here is the result of the understanding of. Um, the Mayan calendar, right? So that's that's why we have it there. And when we look at these different lines, uh, you can see uh, here's July 10th. We had it as part of Abimelech's downfall. And, and that is, we go to November 9th. On November 9th, I'm at the School of the Prophets. I present the 273 based on the Mayan calendar. Jeff then is going to come to an understanding of the Levitical chiasm, that's the 63 and 63 days from June 9th to uh, um, October 13th, so 126 days, which lines up with Samuel Snow's letters. And then he's going to recognize from September 7th to January 11th, so September 7th, 2019 to January 11th, 2020, um, the end of that Levitical chiasm. And that's going to be the pattern that I use in understanding the 777 chiasm beginning on December 21st, 2021 and ending December 25th, 2021. And so that's what I present to Jeff on April 26th. Now, in that study, the center date that, that I use in... Um, so that center date, July 10th, that comes from the study that's done on November 9th, right? So November 9th, I introduced this 273. The center date of that from October 11th, 2019 uh, to April 9th, 2021. The center date is July 10th, 2020. And so we've put that on this line. Nothing happens on that date. So we're just putting it as an empowerment, as a symbol. It's the 10th day of the seventh month. Whether this is correct or not, we don't know. But this is what we're, we've done. And so if this is the case, we would have this July 10th date, 2020, would line up with this date that we have here in 2015. So now we're saying we have July 16th to 18th. And that there are this symbol of Nashville. But we don't have a verse for it, right? So we don't have a verse now that we would apply to this. Right? So we just have this. We don't have a verse. And each one of these then, July 10th, and this July 16th, this Nashville 26th day of the fourth month, there must be something in Judges chapter 9 that can help us establish these dates. So normally what we do is we just go through and we say, okay, we're in Judges. We just did verse 4 and 5 of chapter 9. So we would look at verse 6. Now, verse 6 itself is, um, And all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo and went and made a bimel king by the plane of the pillar that was in Shechem. Now, we know what this is, right? This is this covenant. This is the place. This is the Mount of Blessings and the Mount of Cursing. 
Shechem is between those two places, between Ebal and Gerizim. I need to change my screen so you can see what I'm looking at. Right? And um, this is going to be the first king of Israel before Saul. But of course, he's just not the king of all Israel. He's just the king of northern Israel. So he doesn't unite the kingdom. And not even all of northern Israel, just part, right? So Abimelech is made king. He's going to be the first king they get. And um, so they're at this, this plain, plain of the pillar. So we, we've looked at that. We know where this goes back to. Um, this goes back to when they enter into the promised land and they go to Shechem and they have this covenant that's made. That's Deuteronomy 28 is describing what they're supposed to do. And that's going to happen in the book of Joshua, that they're actually going to do it. So Moses lays out what they're supposed to do and, and then they're going to do it. Now we have here July 10th and we have uh, July 16th to 18th. So July 10th, 2020 and July 16th to 18th, uh, 2015. So then we would have to uh, try to understand what that, that means. So So July 10th, um, Twenty twenty, and July sixteenth, uh, twenty twenty fifteen, are eighteen hundred and twenty one days apart. One eight two one days. Does that mean anything? I'm asking you to do some math here. So 1821 is a three times 607. That's so I don't know if it's significant or not. Okay, any thoughts on that? So is there any significance of tying these two dates together with three times 607? So if we're going to take these verses, so we're looking at this 
We're saying that this is uh, what's being marked. This event, if we take Judges 9, verse 6, is there any way that we can tie it to uh, these dates? Okay, so Dwight's asking a question. Um, so we're looking at the dates on these lines. So the dates that we have, just put it here on the screen so you can see. So we're taking that in 2015, the significant date is July 16th. That is going to be the date that Ellen White's writings are released, and we're going to learn about Nashville, and we're just counting those three days, 16th, 17th, and 18th. Um, 18th is going to be the first Sabbath of the camp meeting in Alberta, in which I'm going to present um, uh, the 26th day of the fourth month. It's actually going to be on July 21st that I present that, I believe. But um, that I show that from the calendars. Now, what we're saying is from July 16th, 2015 to July 10th, 2020. So this is in this line. These are the third way mark. We're just saying that the third way mark should line up with each other. And July 10th is going to be the center of those two, two periods of 273 days. Um, that I have given as this message to Jeff. So we're going to say that it's 1,821 days between those two dates, July 16th and July 10th. Um, and does it mean anything? Can we... Oh, pardon me, I think. Yeah, that was right. So that's 1,821 days. Um... And then compare Judges 9, 6 with Joshua 24, verse 25 to 27. So in Joshua, we're going to have this. Um, this is where they're going to renew the covenant, I believe, right? Um Joshua made a covenant with the people in that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which, spake, which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. Okay. Um, so we got similarities and differences. Of course, um, we know that this is the same location, right? This is the renewal of the covenant. So they had originally done Deuteronomy 28 in that section there, dealing with Deuteronomy 28's apart. They're going to deal with what they do when they come into the promised land, that they need to go to this place, Shechem, between Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. And certain numbers of each of the tribes are to go up on, or the different tribes are going up, up on the different mountains, and some of the priests stay down in the valley. And then there's going to be these uh, messages given from these mountains. And, and that's going to happen in the book of Joshua earlier. And then here, 
They're going to go to Shechem again just before Joshua dies, and uh, they're going to renew this covenant. So they're going to go through this same process, and they set up this stone under an oak, right? So this is the pillar, I would believe, that's being talked about here. Um, let's just see the verses. Yeah, so Deuteronomy 28 is a reference back as well to Exodus 20 to 23. Uh, <clears throat> because, yeah, there's initial covenant made. So they're going to renew that covenant. So you have a covenant made, Mount Sinai, right, Horeb, and then you're going to have them enter into the promised land. They renew this covenant. There's the blessings and the cursings that are given. Uh which in a sense proceed from the law itself. And then uh, Joshua is going to renew this covenant before he dies. And then we're going to see this counterfeit covenant uh, done by Abimelech when he's made king. So they're replacing God with Abimelech. My father, the king. That's what his name means. My, my father is the king. Um, Angelo says, Joash, the king of Judah, was slain in Milo after he'd sent hallowed things to Hazel um, of Syria to persuade the Syrians not to attack Jerusalem. The conspiracy and murder is as at Shechem in Judges 9. Okay. Yeah, that probably does relate. Um, but the main thing is we're, we're looking back here. We're looking back at these primary symbols. And so we can see uh, that there is this true covenant with the true God of the covenant, the Lord of the covenant. And then there's this Baal Bareth covenant, right? And these men are going to be slain. And then Abimelech is going to be made king. And so we need to, to be able to tie these things uh, back to Judges chapter 9. And so we're saying that 9 verse 6 is, is that history. Um, and that we're, we're placing it on July 10th in the downfall of Abimelech, but we're placing it at... The release of Ellen White's writings, that initial history when her writings are released, and the understanding of, of the 26th day of the fourth month, which is going to be then used as the date for July 18th, which is then going to be uh, the date that we predict. And in 2015, just to remember that, Jeff had figured out at the end of 2014 that we're going to be making this prediction regarding some event that's going to come upon the United States by Islam, right? So I remember talking to Jeff we're there at Waviman Lake in Alberta, and, and he was telling me about, about this because I was asking him about this prediction because I'd watched some of the videos where he talked about this, and he said, yeah, that uh, um, uh, Mark Bruce figures he's going to figure this out, right? Mark Bruce thinks he's going to figure out what that is. Um, and uh, yeah. so, so I knew that there was people trying to figure this out. They wanted to know what this prediction was. Um, now, I end up being the one who figures this out, not uh, intentionally or anything, just because of what we studied. So we're going to present at that camp meeting. So Mark Bruce isn't there. He was at the camp meeting in 2014 in at Wabama. Um, but Parminder is going to be at this camp meeting. And, but I'm just talking to Jeff about, about what Mark Bruce had said and what Jeff had said. But I'm going to present the 26th day of the fourth month because I'm going to present on Revelation 9. Right? That's going to be my study. Now, um, I believe that Jeff, when he, he, is at this, uh, what happened there? Um, 
So now that disappeared. Um, so in 2015, I had this calendar of the meeting set up. I don't know what happened to it. But I believe Jeff showed up on like the Thursday or something. So, so Jeff actually didn't see my first presentations on Revelation 9. He came part of the way through. And um, so, but I know Jeff did see the end of it. And um, in one of the big things that came from this, so I just want to go back to 2015, to this camp meeting, just uh, so we have Parminder there. Parminder's going to be presenting all week. Jeff doesn't get there at the beginning of the camp meeting, right? So Jeff isn't going to be there until, um, I think, on the Wednesday or the Thursday. I think he starts presenting on Thursday. Um, and... I know I have the calendar here. I need to find that. Airport pickup. Um, so what ends up, what Jeff brings from that camp meeting that he's going to mention several times. I, I'm going to present that there are two periods of 150 years. That there is... Uh, the five months that's going to go from uh, wherever it's from. Uh, I can't remember. Here it is. Okay. So let me see if I can find this quickly. Because we all know about the first five months, right? That's, yeah, so this is going to be from, uh, okay, I don't have it in this chart. Okay, we always have the one from 1299, but there's another period of five months. And I just don't remember the dates. Oh, here it is. Uh, from 632 to 782. So 632 is going to be in Revelation 9. That's going to be uh, Abu Bakr. That's going to be his um, um, command, Abu Bakr's command. You know, hurt not the people with the seal of God in their foreheads, right? And, and so Jeff picks up on this, that there's two periods of 150 years. So he's going to present that in, in several different studies from that time on. He's going to talk about that. And, and that was the thing that struck him the most about the study. Obviously, he didn't pay attention to the 26th day of the fourth month. Uh, and I didn't particularly pay attention to it either. I just knew that uh, when you started in July 27th, 1299, that's going to be the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar. And when you get to July 27th, 1840, it's also going to be the 26th day of the fourth month. Right. Later on, I find out that all these July 27ths are, are being marked in these in our, a month, a day, and a year. And that um, they're, they're, events and they're going to be the 26th day of the fourth month on either the Julian or the Gregorian calendar, right? So all of these things come together in 2015. So if we're looking at this, um, this verse, and all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo and went and made of him like king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem, and then they told it Jotham, and he stood atop Mount Gerizim, and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. Now, we've already made an application of Judges 9, 
where Judges 9 verse 7 is September 7th, right? So, so we have different lines that we take from Judges, 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 um, uh, in Judges 9, we have uh, we made this application. Um, and so we did that. Where did we do this here now? Um, so we, we had it with the olive. That's going to be November 9th. So we're going to make an application of September 7th. So that's going to be later, right, uh, in these lines. So we're going to say that verse 7 uh, to 10 are going to be uh, relating to the olive. So let me go back here. So we've already made an application in Abimelech's downfall of 9 verse 7. Right? That's going to be September 7th. And, and we've got to the It's 9-7. What's the okay. Yeah. All right. With um, you say the brambles, who does that represent? Does that represent the uh, message of Paul Mendel? No. The bramble has to do with the messages, uh, misapplication of prophecy in connection with Collins' study. I just wanted to. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we have Judges nine verse seven there in two thousand and eighteen, right? So if we're looking at these lines and we got Judges nine six, so originally we're going to go four, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, I don't know how we were going to do this because we haven't done it. But we're saying that um, we could then take, we have to take a verse that goes, that marks 2015. And, and we don't have a verse. So we just look at Judges 9, verse 6. Can Judges 9, verse 6 mark 2015? Or is there something that we're trying to do here with this line that's not working? Right? Because we're going to have nine for seven over here. Right? In 2018. So do we just, you know, say, well, nine verse six, because we're going to have July 16th, we're going to have September 27th, and we don't, we don't have verses in between uh, nine verse six and nine verse seven, right? To, to fill out those way marks. But we seem fairly happy with putting 9, verse 4, and 5 as 2014. So how do we solve this problem? I mean, are we, are we doing this wrong, this Jotham's line? Because we have these dates. We know these dates are valid way marks in this seven years. But how do we put the verses that relate to these dates? That, that's the question. So in 2015, remember I'm saying that I'm recognizing these two periods of 150 years, recognizing the 26th day of the fourth month. Ellen White's writings are going to be released. And, you know, we might even just say, well, you know, I'm going to present um, on July, you know, 20th, 21st, and 22nd, right? So, um, yeah, so I present... Uh, July 20, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Now, Jeff is just going to hear my last presentation. That's going to be the third presentation, because Jeff is going to present right before me. That's going to be his first presentation is right after breakfast. 
and then I present after Jeff, and then Jeff presents again after me before lunch. Okay, so that's going to be the 22nd of July. But on the, the, the 20th and the 21st, I present my two first two presentations. So the first two presentations, it's going to be the second presentation on July 21st, where I actually present the 26th day of the fourth month. Because in the first presentation, I'm going to deal with uh, Revelation chapter 8, and then I'm going to deal with the uh, the first woe and and start on to the second woe in on July 21st, and then on July 22nd, I'm going to deal with um, what's happening uh, presently at that time with uh, Abu, De Abu Bekr, al Daddy, and all that history and so forth. But I'm going to cover that 150 uh, years as well in that study, two periods of 150 years. That's how I remember my presentations. So, so if that's the case, um, do we put in, you know, some more dates to this, that we just say that this is that whole history from the release of Ellen White's writings on the 16th, um, you know, and they go to like the 22nd or something like that. We could do that. I don't know whether that's better. Um, okay, so the contrast, Angela, what's the contrast? We looked at the similarities. You want to see what the contrast is of Joshua 24 verse 24. 4 to 27 and Judges 9 verse 5 to 6. What's contrasted there? I mean, one is God is king, the other one is man is king. Yeah. You're right. And Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance and she came and then he wrote the law of God, took a great stone as a witness. Mm -hmm. And he said, Stone had heard the words, and therefore, you know, it will know if you refuse God, like if you go back on God. Mm -hmm. So I thought there was some parallels. There's a total, total difference in 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 the motivation and the the actions there to what was happening happening with the uh, with, with 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 the people of Shechem in in uh, Judges nine. Yeah. So can we attach this in any way to 2015, the light that's being presented? Right? <laughs> so we're saying that this is the light that's presented that's going to undo the influence of Parminder through this history. Right? That is, when we look at the darkness, the darkness of this line is Parminder's time setting. Now that time setting is going to carry through this movement. That is the wrong method of time setting, the wrong use of time, let's put it that way, right? And it's something that I'm fighting through this whole history, not just in 2018, but all through. I mean, and Jeff had been fighting against time setting as well. So in everything that I'm doing with time, the intention is not to set a date. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to set a date of any event. Now, it's going to be that a date is going to be set. But when that date is set, November 9th, 2019, and even before that, even before Tess presents that November 9th, I do set a date. That is, I make a date of um, April 8th, 2019 based on the fact that this movement is saying that we're going to set time, right? And I have the, the line of Christ study, the week of Christ study. And the week of Christ study marks Judas's betrayal. And, and I understand this to be a symbolic line, right? That is, I don't believe that it's time setting, contrary to Ellen White's, um, understanding. Now, there's a video. If you want to watch what I say about time setting, 
in um, at when I present this, um, I just find it here quickly. It it was a study that I did, and I'm trying to think of the date. Um, I think it was September 22nd in 2018, but I can tell you in a minute um, because I have it set up here. Um, yeah, so it's September 22nd, 2018. And if you start watching from minute uh, um, marker, whatever they call it, 4777, I'm not sure what that means, but it's marker... So you watch the video. It's called Midst of the Week, September 22, 2018. You can find it on my YouTube page. Um, here, I'll just give the link to it here in the chat. All right, so it's going to show you that uh, time marker. It must be, I don't know if it's that second, 4,777 probably. Um, Okay. okay. And then we got a comment. So by Angela Dwight. Okay, so Dwight puts a comment here. Uh, so the idea of Ellen White's what writings being released. So this is the unpublished manuscripts. Israel being reminded of Gideon's service. Abimelech's influence extended throughout Israel. P and T's influences as a poison has extended throughout the movement. Jotham's parable is a reproach to Israel. Establishing correct methods of chronological examinations is a reproach to those who have accepted the poison of spiritual formation. Okay, that's that's kind of rather um, uh, so. So Jotham's parables have approached Israel, establishing correct methods of chronological examinations. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I'd probably put it a bit different way, but I understand what you're saying. So I, I don't know what spiritual formation has to do with it, particularly um, other than that Parminder is using Jesuit ideas. But, you know, people may openly oppose spiritual formation, but not realize that that they're caught up in some kind of spiritualism. Um, it, it's, it's definitely a deception that comes upon people. Yeah, so Jesuit so Dwight says Jesuit ideas is the point. Um, yeah, so we see this with Parminder. Parminder isn't a Jesuit, you know. There's no evidence that he ever went to Jesuit schools or had Jesuit training, but he is definitely using methods that he would have received from the types of training that he had and from his own personal experience, um, which many of us, uh, well, is he a Jesuit tool? Well, I don't think the Jesuits have to particularly be involved directly. Um, you know, Satan is the one behind it, right? So you don't need somebody to actually be a Jesuit in order for Satan to be using them, right? The Jesuits are just the, basically the, the spies and the espionage of the Catholic Church. Um, so they infiltrate churches and so forth. But you don't have to be a Jesuit to be doing the work of Satan, right? Um. But yeah, I understand what people mean. It's just, you know, you don't have to have him be a Jesuit. The Jesuits don't ever actually have to have talked to Parminder for him to be being misused in this way, right? Um, it's not how it works. So people can be controlled by Satan and they're influenced by the things that they have learned. If they haven't learned in the school of Christ, they've learned in the school of Satan, right? Learning in the school of Christ is the primary place that we have to learn. We learn of his meekness and his lowliness. We yoke up with him in service and we learn of him, right? 
we get to cooperate and work with him. So Parminder is obviously not doing that. He's not manifesting a Christ-like spirit in how he's working, using deception and manipulation to get what he thinks is right. Now, the question has to do with Abimelech here. So we're moving pretty slowly here. We At least we got that one-way mark established, 2014. Now we're working on 2015. And we know that we, we still haven't got a verse for this. We have 9 verse 6, and does 9 verse 6 fit? Or are we going about this the wrong way? Do we have to have a verse for every single one of these waymarks? Now, if we were going to look at um, uh, these... Um, these events, so these events in Judges chapter 9, we first have this situation with the 70 sons being hired because Abimelech wants to be king. He becomes king, right? Okay, so Dwight says 9 verse 6 fits. So it fits for July 16th to 22nd about Nashville and the 26th day of the fourth month. I'm not so, so sure it fits. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't see how this verse gives us these symbols. I don't have anything from this verse to, to tie it to these symbols. That That's my view. And maybe I'm just being a little bit myopic here, but <clears throat> I'm saying that there should be symbols in a verse that tie us to that verse ties to this way mark, right? So, so far I don't see anything. I, I see a story, a narrative that relates to this history. Um, so when we look at Signs of the Times, August 4th, 1881. So we had dealt with this before. I watched the videos where we had read that. So this is going to be... Um, Let's see if I can find it quickly here. It's just periodicals. Signs of the Times. August 4th, 1881. So this is going to deal all with um, Abimelech, right? So... And you're saying we need to look at paragraph nine. To 13. Yeah, I'm just reading over this really quickly again. Okay, is there anything in particular? Because I don't see anything here that ties us to these symbols of July 26th or July 16th, Nashville, or the 26th day of the fourth month to mark these this verse at 2015. So is there some particular point, a symbol? White? Because I'm looking for symbols, right? Not just for narratives or stories that ties this together. Because we have the symbols, uh, paragraph 10. Okay. Okay, so what's the symbol? Do I... So 
So here in this, this way mark, so, you know, we're also going to have Okay, so you're just saying man's wisdom over God's, that's going to be Alan White's writings. Okay, I'm looking for a symbol, not a narrative. So we got the 150 years. There's two of those periods of 150 years. So what we're saying is Ellen White's writings are released. We have Nashville. Um, and we have the understanding of the two periods of 150 years and the 26th day of the fourth month. Those things are all revealed in this period of time. But I'm looking for a symbol that is a numerical symbol to tie us to some verse that's going to give us, tie us to these symbols. And maybe there's something there. Because we could apply that idea, you know, man's wisdom is being taken over God, so we need to have God's wisdom over man. But we could apply this to all of these different uh, events in some way. I mean, we could apply it to lots of different events. So when we look at this line, so when I look at Jotham's line, maybe you don't see what I see, but I'm seeing that we're getting these different symbols, right? August 11th, 26th day of the fourth month. Um, the symbol of Nashville, right? The 391.5, the 187, right? July 18th. Um, September 7th, from October 13th to September 7th. All of these things that are revealed there, the 391 and a half days, the 329 days, the 187, 150 years, 26 days, the fourth month, uh, August 11th, all these different symbols. We come to understand in this period of seven years prior to November 9th, 2019. And Maybe we don't need a verse for any of these particularly. We don't have to go through the story and take this line and lay out the verses. But we do need to in this line. Now, the way mark that we have that lines up with this July 16th is July 10th. Now, this is the Day of Atonement symbol, right? It's the 10th day of the seventh month. This is the Day of Atonement. And this is connected to the Mayan calendar. Right? That's that's where we're going to get that. The, the 273, the message to the Levites. It's going to have different dates. And that's going to be this date that I mark that I first... On November 9th, I present at the School of the Prophets, those two studies on the 273. Because of Jeff's understanding on April 26th, I'm going to send him this email saying, based upon the Mayan calendar, failed prediction, and all these line of failed predictions, it's possible July 18th may be just another failed prediction. That seemed to make sense to me. Jeff doesn't respond other than to say, I'm going to read it, but he never responds uh, and, and watch the video that I did. He never responds what he thinks about it. When we get to July 10th, uh, this is going to be uh, the Friday, right? The next day, Jeff is going to present his last message, right? So we can put July 10th and 11th. I believe we did that before. Um, on this line. So we have July 10th to 11th. That's going to be Jeff presenting his last message. And um,
so um, this is going to be, I'm just going to read to you from an email uh, that um, Stephen sent to me back in um, let me see if I can find this. Um, no, that's not it. Uh, so Stephen sent me an email about what Jeff said in his last presentation. Um, so Not there, it's not there. Yeah, so Stephen said, I was reading this email from Stephen and I can't find it now. Um, so it's going to be in 2020. It's going to be. Hmm. Sorry about that. I thought I could find it easier. It's going to be in December. Anyway, uh, I can't find it. But Stephen brings out a point about Jeff's last presentation. And So I sent out an email, Stephen responds to it. Hmm. I can't find it now. No, oh, this might be it. No, this is earlier. Okay, I can't find it. But anyway, uh, no, it's December. <clears throat> anyway, I can't find this. But but Stephen refers to this uh, message about what it was and the significance of it, and he's going to refer to this back um, in December. I believe, of uh, 2020. He's going to refer back to what Jeff had presented. Um, and so we know that Jeff presented, yeah, you know, we're going to maintain our faith, that we're not going to, that we're going to stand fast on that foundation that was laid, right? Can't remember the exact words. <clears throat> But we can line this up with the release of Ellen White's writings is, is my main point, right? So, so we can line this up with that verse. And so maybe here, in that sense, even though we don't have all of the pieces, we could put nine verse six here. that here we have a counterfeit covenant that's being made, right, by, in that verse. But it contrasts with the truth uh, uh, that are being presented here, that are connected with this, with this way, Mark. Does that satisfy you, Dwight? We're, we're done here for today. Not yet. So he says not yet. So we're going to have to come back to this tomorrow. Hopefully you have your voice back by tomorrow. Um, 
But anyway, that's where we're going to finish here today. So we, I, I think we're getting somewhere. I believe we are. Okay. So let's close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today. We ask that you can continue to watch over us and keep us. Um, bring us together again to study your word. And we pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.